Welcome everyone. Uh, today is Monday, January 10th. This is Explore Careers in Healthcare, Session 1. What is a superhero? We're kind of um, using that, that image of a superhero in healthcare. We know that healthcare has a great need right now. So we're trying to get the word out about all of the fantastic career pathways within the healthcare. Um, nursing, yes, um, but there are so many more paths besides that. So I just want to point out to all of you that CareerForce MN has some fantastic content on its website right now. Um, on CareerForceMN.com slash healthcare, you can find resources for people who are working looking for work right now. Labor market data for each uh, region of the state, a list of events taking place all across the state in every single region um, that are all around healthcare. We've got an interactive fact sheet about uh, transferable skills. Um, we've got a kind of a persuasion piece, five great reasons to work for healthcare. And so I appreciate all of you being on this call um, and then take that information and send it to someone else. You may be a young person, maybe a career changer that uh, for whom that information might resonate for you. For all of the educators and the students who may be listening to this uh, webinar right now, we've got a bunch of resources for you too. Um, five great reasons, again, that persuasive piece, but specifically for a younger audience. Um, a, a PDF sheet on be a healthcare superhero. You know, wh why should a young person consider a career in healthcare? Um, and information about the state initiative to train 1,000 Minnesotans to be CNAs. You know, even if a person goes through the C, I think it's a three weeks uh, training and then works as a CNA perhaps um, for the next year or while you're in college, you know, that can greatly impact uh, both your career in terms of, of uh, experiences and would greatly impact the industry. So please take a look at all of those resources. Right now, though, I want to show you a very short, I think it's like 29 seconds, a video that Career Force has put together on Be a Superhero. Give me a thumbs up when you hear the So our YouTube channel, as I said, CareerForce MN, is full of videos, uh, so many videos to help both job seekers and employers. And that's where you can find this one, too. So I encourage you to go over and, and share that with someone. Um, you can also find it on social media. You know, the other question I know when I've been a job seeker, changing careers and getting back into the workforce or after I was laid off, I kind of wondered, well, does that job really fit my personality? You know, because I was really concerned with finding something that's going to work for me. I knew who I was and I wanted that to match. I don't know if any of you have ever taken a career assessment. Some people call it the Holland Code. Some people call it RIASEC. Um, RIASEC stands for Realistic, Investigative, Artistic, Social, Enterprising, and Conventional. And uh, it's, it's a career assessment that's been around for at least 50 or 60 years. Mr. John Holland had started it. And it really gives you a ranking, you know, are, what are some of the traits that are part of your life? You know, are you a doer? Are you more of a thinker? Are you really a creative person? Are you a helper, um, persuader, or an organizer? Um, 
So some people you can find this on the internet have taken all of the healthcare careers and then sorted that into the Holland code. So if you came out primarily as a realistic person that you really just like to get your hands in there and do something, well, they said ambulance drivers, radiologic technicians are two of those jobs that fit that profile. Maybe you're more of a conventional person. You like to organize, keep everything s sorted and straight. Well, jobs such as the pharmacy tech uh, technician or a dental assistant might play into that. Um, maybe you're a social person. That's definitely where the CNA, the RN, the nursing um, jobs, a psychologist really comes in because you love working with people, being in that one on one. Um, the government has a site called mynextmoves.org, and that's where they have, um, it's a pretty quick, maybe a 15-minute online survey. You can go through that. It's going to ask you 60 questions, and I've done it, you know, a couple of times, and I, I find that it really hits home, like, oh, yeah, that is me. Um, so it's, it's really pretty valid, and it's been around for so many years, so it's a really valid tool. So you can go to mynextmove.org and fill it out and then see where you land and then explore some of the other options. There are so many more besides these within healthcare. So get, getting right down to it, I would like to welcome our speakers today. We have both um, someone from Caring Professionals Home Care. It's a very small, independently run agency in the Twin Cities Metro. She's going to tell her story about working in um, the healthcare industry as a PCA and then a little bit more about her agency. So you can find out, well, what is it like to work for an independent small facility? And then we have um, a sourcing specialist from Stanford Health. Stanford Health is a major organization that runs both Sanford Clinics and Good Samaritan Society. So to give you a perspective, he's going to tell his healthcare story and also what you could expect if you looked for a job in a larger organization. So I'm pleased to welcome Starlisha Doby from uh, Caring Professionals Home Care. Welcome, Starlisha. Hi, thank you so, so much. I hope you can, can you hear me? Yes, great. Awesome, thank you so much. I hope everyone's doing well on this Monday. Um, as Liz was saying, I am a staffing coordinator at Caring Professionals. We are a small um, home care agency. I got my start at Caring Professionals in 2015, and I started off as a homemaker. Um, I actually have a son who is disabled, um, William is a nonverbal autistic child who has some suffers from some cognitive um, challenges. So um, not only do I work, or yeah, you know, not only do I work with um, individuals who receive support services such as PCA and homemaking services, I also have a son who um, I care for as well. So I I, I understand things on many um, 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 in many many situations. I mean, um, platforms. But what I do at Caring Professionals, um, I guess, I, like I said, I start off as a homemaker. And um, what homemakers do is they uh, assist clients with their uh, cleaning needs in our homes, make sure the client's home is clean and um, make sure they're able to navigate throughout their apartment safely and uh, also help with laundry and shopping and meal prep. Um, so mostly what a, a homemaker does takes place in the home. I absolutely enjoyed what I did. Um, one of the questions that we're being asked to answer, answer excuse me, is how um, a homemaker or PCA impact their clients' everyday lives. And uh, as a homemaker, uh, it was always a joy for me to bring a smile to my client's face. And I'm so sorry that you can't see me today. I was not able to get in front of a, a camera. But um, I really enjoyed helping people. Always a pleasure bringing a smile to my client's case. Um, I mean, how happy are you when your home is clean and everything is put in its place? Um, 
And when they receive that regular service, it really does boost their self-esteem, um, helps with uh, depression. And some of our clients also don't see, have many interactions with the public. So we have a homemaker going in regularly to uh, provide a service. Um, it's, 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 it's a great thing when you can find um, a match there between a client and employee, because not only does it help the client, it also helps the employee. Um, so homemakers have a very um, huge role in healthcare, um, as far as home care based um, healthcare is concerned. PCAs provide more of a hands-on um, service, um, so they're there assisting with transfers from a wheelchair to the bed, from a wheelchair to a chair. They're assisting with dressing, grooming, bathing, toileting. Um, some may even pass meds if they have additional training to do so. Um, PCAs obviously also play a major role in home-based health care. A lot of our clients well, aren't able to um, stay in their homes unless they have a PCA um, assisting them regularly. So um, very vital role uh, that PCAs play in home care-based, uh, excuse me, home-based health care. Um, working for caring professionals uh, was a wonderful experience for me. Like I said, I am a parent to a special needs child. What caring, what caring, professional, caring professionals allowed me to do was uh, set my own schedule um, and work when um, I was able to. I had a small son who was in school and had therapy and um, caring professionals was very supportive and allowed me to work around my son's schedule. Um, and. Like I said, that's one of the great benefits here at Caring Pros. We don't send our employees off. They pick and choose their location. They pick the clients that they want to work with. If there are any candidates, or excuse me, if there are any listeners who are interested in healthcare and want to um, get some experience being a PCA and or a homemaker and working with caring professionals, it's a great way for you to get started um, on an entry level basis. So. That's what I have to add to the conversation. And thank you so much, Liz, for um, allowing me to participate in this wonderful opportunity. Sure. You know, I have the slide up here on how to apply. Can you just talk a little bit about that so you can either apply in person or online? Absolutely. That is correct. Um, if you are interested in applying, you can apply. Like Liz said, uh, two options to apply. You can apply in person. Our address is um, there uh, listed on the slide, uh, 1543 Como, uh, Suite 101. We are located near the state fairgrounds, just off of Snelling. Um, if you want to go ahead and apply online, you can do so by going to www.mycaringpro.com. Um, and the instructions on how to apply are also on the slide there for you. You can also give us a call if you have any questions at 651-789-2299. And I guarantee myself and my colleagues will be more than happy to help you or assist you with any questions you have. Also, if you have a family member who uh, is approved for services for PCA and or homemaking services, you can also work with that family member. Give us a call, 651-789-2299. If you have any questions, uh, the pay right now is based off of where clients live. Um, if you choose to work with a client that lives in St. Paul, starting pay is $13 an hour. Um, Minneapolis is going to be $14.25. However, we also offer services outside of homemaking and PCA that pay up to $16 an hour. Um, and I uh, should also mention that wonderful $75 um, hiring bonus that we have going right now and many other bonuses um, and many other things. If you have any questions, give us a call. We're more than happy to help you out. So. I want to ask you, Starlisha, about um, different ages. You know, so one question came in is, you know, what's the minimum age? Can a high schooler do this? And then often I hear, um, would this work be too difficult for someone maybe over 50 or 60 if they wanted a part time work? You know, so um, what how how do you how do you approach any age who might want to do this work? Those are two really, really good questions. Um, the minimum age is 16, uh, 16 years old. Um, there are some uh, restrictions in that. Uh, 
during the school year. We can't have a 16 year old obviously work um, later than 11 p.m. But yeah, we invite 16 year olds to apply. It's a great job for someone who's interested in healthcare entry level, obviously. Um, as far as um, someone who's a little older, or maybe even what we refer to as an empty nester, it's a great job for someone um, like that. Again, the best thing about caring professionals is you get to choose your clients. We send, how we work is it's kind of like um, matchmaking for home care, basically. So if I have an employee um, that lives in a specific area, uh, obviously we look at them and see what type of employee they might be. And we work um, hard to match them with, or do our best to match them with um, a client that we feel like would be a good fit for, you know, the, the uh, employee. Um, also, we give the information to our employees as far as our available clients and our employees are then able to um, decide if they'd like to um, meet with the client and see if it would be a good fit before they provide services. So, um, yeah, if, if there's someone out there who's a little bit up in age, this is not anything that would be too strenuous for you. Um, you get to pick and choose what you can do, what you can't do. I often have older applicants who come in and say, hey, I'm, you know, said age, I'm not able to do this or that, or, you know, whatever it is. And, my job is to say that's completely fine. Let me find a, a client out there that would be a good fit for you. So honestly, it's a great job for any age. No uh, discrimination there. Good, thank you. And what is your need for um, applicants who speak languages other than English? Is it, um, do you have mostly English-based clients or others? Mostly English-based clients for the most part, um, but uh, every once in a while, we do have a client that speaks a, a different language, but for the most part, English uh, is the uh, language. Good, language. okay, thank you. So any final words? Why should someone consider this? Uh, you know, if you are looking to set your own schedule, you're looking to help people, you really enjoy helping people, um, this would be, you know, consider applying today. Uh, it's a great job, great opportunity for someone who's interested in healthcare and, uh, or a second job if you're interested in, you know, additional income. Or as I said before, if you're older and you're just kind of looking for you know, something to kind of do after you've retired, again, Caring Professionals is a great company for you to get started with. Um, they completely changed my life and I enjoy what I do here. Thank you so much for being here today and feel free to put your information into the uh, chat if you're able. Um, people contact uh, Starlisha and www.mycaringpro.com. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Now we'd like to get a perspective of a large healthcare corporation. Um, what would it take to be a superhero in this type of setting? Um, they've got multiple locations, multiple facilities, multiple types of jobs. So with us today is Casey Coop, and he's going to tell us how he got here and what um, what it offers for someone like yourself who may be looking for a new career. Take it away. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, very nice to uh, get to see you all and, and uh, talk a little bit more about Sanford Health and Good Samaritan Society. Um, we actually have a lot of great opportunities um, in, in kind of playing off of Starlish's um, presentation as well. Um, there really is a, a great opportunity to go into a variety of different positions uh, to get some experience. Um, and so it's very important that people understand that, you know, healthcare is a very caring field. Um, you know, if you want a job that allows you to be um, dedicated to a purpose, uh, I think healthcare is definitely that um, in every which way. Um, and so, um, this would be a, a great, great option uh, for people starting out or looking to transition into something that just gives them a little bit more of a sense of daily drive. 
Um, <clears throat> but uh, um, I actually just kind of recently fell into healthcare. Um, I originally come from a background of college recruitment. And so working with college age students in helping them to find that perfect fit uh, in a school uh, is very similar to trying to find a perfect fit in a career. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions that people have about, you know, if I have a degree in this, I can only do this. Or um, if I am looking for uh, a new opportunity, I have to go back to school and I have to get a whole new degree and I have to, you know, go through all these hurdles before I can even step foot in the door. And that's really not the case. Um, so Sanford Health is our clinics, our nursing, or sorry, our, our uh, hospitals. Um, whereas Good Samaritan Society is our nursing home. So our long-term care, assisted living facilities. Um, we actually do have a couple of uh, home health based uh, locations in the Twin Cities area there too. Um, and so we do something very similar to, to what Sterlisha and her company do as well. Um, and those caregiver positions are a great foot in the door for someone who is really wanting to know, you know, is healthcare for me? Is what I want to do? Um, you know, do I like the medical side of things or do I like more the caregiver side of things? Um, and, and this will give you a chance to, to do a little bit of both. Um, but moving into, say, a nursing home and looking at a, a CNA or looking at a resident assistant type position, these again are, are starter positions within that particular job or that particular um, company that you can kind of test the waters a little bit. Um, we have a lot of great programs going on right now where um, we will help train you in, in becoming CNA certified so that you don't have to worry about one, the cost of getting certified, uh, but two, you know, being able to start right away. Um, we want you guys to be able to transition into that job right away because we understand that time is, is costing you money as well. So we really want to help with that process. Um, and they do really believe in training and um, really building yourself up professionally um, in both Good Sam and Sanford. So um, we have a, a team called Aspire, which will help with mentoring our staff um, and, and determining what their career path looks like. Um, they can apply for scholarship programs and things like that um, so that they have the ability and the backing to go back to school should they need to, to go from a CNA to an RN. Um, we actually even have some loan forgiveness programs for uh, nursing students, which is pretty cool. Um, but the map that you're looking at right now is the footprint of Sanford and Good Sam. So, you know, for some people, it's not just a matter of looking for a new job. You know, they're, they're kind of rethinking is where I'm at, where I want to be. Um, you know, should I be looking at another state and moving to another state? Um, if that is the case, there's definitely some functionality with Sanford and Good Sam to make that transition very easily um, to where you could be in Minnesota now, but maybe you want to live in Florida. Uh, we have some locations down in Florida uh, that a person could work for um, or Washington State uh, or Texas. Um, but uh, it really gives you that ability to um, have some variety uh, in your, your working day. And I know that this is kind of based around healthcare and, and more, you know, nursing type positions. Um, but very few people realize that healthcare is an industry is 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 a big business it, it, it isn't just the nurses and doctors it's the accountants it's the marketing people it's the hr staff which i'm a part of um and and really we are all superheroes of healthcare in our own ways um but but those nursing uh roles and things like that most definitely they are the backbone of this industry and so um we really want to support them in every way that we can. And, and honestly, they support us so much. Um, so if you're looking at a career in healthcare and you want to be a superhero, um, there are certain traits that you will want to have and, and to think about in moving into the industry. Um, and I think, you know, one of those major ones is dedication, dedication to um, the job uh, and what you're doing. The service that you're providing is life-saving it's it's life improving um, and and you want to be the type of person that 
that is what gives you that that sense of accomplishment, that sense of pride in what you do and what you uh, work for. So, um, you know, that's a great trait um, that is more and more often looked for in healthcare professionals is just someone that is dedicated to helping people that loves to, to be there for people and is strong and empathetic. Um, so, so be thinking of that too, when you're looking at, at, uh, healthcare. Um, but, um, uh, being your own superhero, uh, is something that you can do, um, throughout, obviously the footprint that we currently have, um, uh, both Sanford and good Sam, our, our, uh, corporate headquarters are actually in South Dakota in Sioux Falls. Um, but we do actually have a large, uh, footprint in Minnesota for you guys. So there's a lot of possibilities for work, um, whether you're looking more the hospital or clinical route, or whether you're looking at going more uh, the, the nursing homes and assisted living type areas. And so I broke those down into the, the specific areas there. So in Sanford uh, locations in Minnesota, we have about 147 different locations. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of clinics and hospitals in and around the Twin Cities metro area. Um, but we do have quite a few in Minnesota. Um, I would say our, our larger footprint in the Twin Cities market is going to be Good Samaritan Society, which is going to be our long term care facilities, assisted living. Um, and so you do have uh, about 12 different options that are in or near the Twin Cities area there. Um, and, and some great opportunities. Robbinsdale is one, it's listed two locations there. One of them is a home health opportunity. Um, uh, the lodge at Howard Lake is is kind of north uh, east or sorry yeah northwestern side of the Twin Cities area there. Um, you have big suburbs, you have small suburbs, um, you have a mixture of everything. Even south of the Twin Cities, slightly, you have St. Peter and Arlington and Winthrop. Um, those would be fairly close by as well. But um, we really want um, you to understand that. You know, coming in and, and starting in a position, whatever it may be, um, there's always that chance of growth in our industry and there's always the support of growth uh, in our industry. So, um, you know, you may come in as someone who knows absolutely nothing about healthcare and is, you know, working in food service, helping our, our cooks uh, feed our, our residents. Um, and you may end up, you know, a director of nursing, uh, you know, the exposure is really the key. Um, so, so trying something, getting involved in it, um, being able to visualize and, and uh, interact with those varying positions is going to give you that idea of really what area of healthcare suits me best. Um, you know, I've been in the military, I've been a college recruiter, I've actually been an auto body technician. Uh, and of course, now uh, I work in healthcare and doing sourcing. There is no necessarily perfect path that is going to take you from point A to point B in a straight line. Um, so you need to know that that, that transition is going to happen, but it's got to be organic. It's got to be something where you're seeing something, you're trying it out, uh, and it makes sense to you, but you see yourself potentially somewhere else. It may be a smooth transition. It may be a, a total 180. You never know, but you still have that ability to see that and make those decisions and make that transition. So clinical and non-clinical positions. So like I said, if you're if you're not 100% on like the nursing type roles, know that there is some opportunity available in other areas uh, of non-clinical with us. Uh, so cooks, uh, environmental service, laundry. Um, we have administrators uh, at locations. Um, that help, we have medication aids. Uh, resident assistance would be very similar to a home health aid, but in a, uh, in a facility. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, uh, take full advantage of, of whatever opportunities that are there. If you are someone who is high school age, college age, there's a lot of great PRN positions that allow you to do enough work where, you know, you get a little bit of a wage, but at the same time, it's not such a time commitment that you're, you know, having to take away a lot of that time from your studies to, to do the job itself. 
And some of the benefits that we offer, um, you know, obviously, depending on who you are, where you're at in life, some of these will be more important than others. Um, but uh, for full time, you have uh, health care, you have your dental vision, uh, paid time off. Uh, we actually do a 401k matching uh, plan through uh, Good Sam and Sanford. Uh, short term, long term disability, obviously, um, employee perks. So we have a number of companies that we work with, uh, and because of that, we have discounts for employees at those locations um, to, to basically give our employees a little bit of a, a discount on those same services, whether that's your cell phone service, um, whether it's you know uh, gas savings or something like that at a gas station, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, but the biggest ones, especially if you are starting out your college, high school age, um, or just kind of entering the industry, that mentoring service through Aspire, um, you can use that even if you're not currently employed with us. If you're just trying to test the water and see what job in healthcare would be best for me, you know, you can get a hold of them. You can work with them. Um, and then scholarship programs. Obviously, student debt is is always out there, whether you just graduated or whether this is 10, 12 years down the road, and you're thinking, man, I still got these student loans hanging around. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, we can help out with that. Um, the scholarship programs, as well as, uh, like I said, we do have some uh, loan forgiveness programs that they've implemented now um, that are great for uh, incoming nurses. But how to apply, um, you can do it in a number of different ways. Uh, so this is our website, sanfordcareers.com. You can go on and you can search by location. I recommend entering your location into the search um, just because it will give you then any potential jobs within about a 25 mile or 50 mile or however many miles you want to add it, you know, put it out towards uh, radius and they will then match you up with those positions. You can filter by clinical or non-clinical. Um, you can filter by a specific location in the Twin Cities. Um, that you're wanting to work for and just see those jobs. Um, so it's very user friendly. Um, and then in each description, when you're looking at the description of that position, there's an apply now button um, that you can submit an online application. Um, it's a pretty fast process too. So you upload your resume. Uh, you don't have to worry about then filling out your whole work experience and your educational experience. Um, and so it really streamlines the speed of how quickly you can apply. Um, but you can always reach out to us uh, with questions um, when you're looking at positions. Um, again, if you don't know quite what you want to do and you just need some help, um, you know, we can ask you a little bit about yourself, where you see yourself, um, and, and that can give us a better inkling of, of where you might fit in starting out. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, for, Casey, yeah. you know, I, I like the fact that you said, you know, just you can email them and have a conversation with you mm -hmm. or some of your coworkers. Um, and I think that's fantastic. You know, you know, all of the options and then the job seekers mm -hmm. coming in with their years of experience, if they're an older person or if they're a younger person, you know, you, they too can have that conversation with you about what the best first fit would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and don't feel like you have to know that right away either. I, I think, you know, again, when you graduate from college, when you're just getting done with high school, there's this immediate demand to know exactly what you want to do and how to go about getting there. Um, and, and that's not the case. Um, you know, know that you will have times where you're not going to know exactly what to do or you're not going to um, be able to immediately uh, fall in love with something. Um, you know, it takes time. It takes experimentation um, to, to really kind of figure that out. Um, and I think that's one thing that Sanford does really well and Good Sam is that there's always that ability to transition, to move within a location or within a hospital or clinic to where if if you're not working out as a uh, you know uh, a food service person you know maybe food service wasn't your thing maybe you want to try the clinical side and then you know go and get cna trained and do that instead 
Um, you mentioned something, a TRN, um, and one listener wondered what TRN oh, stands for. Um, well, I actually said PRN, um, PRN, which basically it's it's a um, it's a type of position. Um, so it's it basically means uh, as needed. So we have like food service positions and things like that 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 will be on the website listed as a PRN position. Um, those are you have varying hours from week to week. Um, and they're usually right around the range of about 12 to 18 hours a week. So for someone who is looking for a flexible schedule and they're looking for something that um, is going to allow them to work minimal hours, so they're, they're doing this as either a secondary income or they're um, trying to kind of work around other things in their schedule, PRN positions are a great option because they're, they're they're able to work more with their their flexible schedule uh, and they're able to uh, then really not have to pile on hours um, or be expected to work a large amount of hours on a given week. So uh, college students, I would say, you know, even newly retired uh, individuals that maybe are just realizing, you know what, you know, I like retirement. I like being retired, but at the same time, you know, I. I got to have something that just keeps me busy a couple hours a week or something like that. Those are great positions for that as well. Um, because it actually gives you that opportunity to get back into the community. Um, and just to stay that that little bit active um, outside of the home and outside of um, kind of the, the fun stuff of retirement, we'll call it. That's great to hear. Yeah, I really do appreciate when uh, companies offer flexibility to people. So then it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Casey, for being here today and talking about Good Samaritan Society and Sanford Health. I really appreciate it. Um, please contact them, sanfordcareers.com or talent at sanfordhealth.org. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to now just wrap everything up and let everyone know who's watching this of all of the other healthcare hiring events that are taking place this week and the rest of the month and obviously going forward. Um, healthcare, explore careers in healthcare. I will be running this every Monday, except next Monday because of Martin Luther King holiday. Um, I'll be holding it on Tuesday, January 18th. And in recognition of that, we're going to be talking a little bit more about diversity and equity in the healthcare um, world. You know, what what are all of the options um, depending on what your background is? Where can you put your strengths for speaking multiple languages? Um, you know, what what is it for all of us? Then on Monday, January 24th, we will be talking about career paths. As both Starlisha and Casey alluded to, they started one place and then they've grown, go from one position to another so that you can stay in the industry. So we're going to see some documents, some charts, some flow charts that people have created. And then Monday, January 30th, I will have a couple of people here to talk about some of the CNA training programs that are currently being offered. So where can you go throughout the state to take part in CNA training? And what is it like? Is it like a tech boot camp where you have to put everything aside for three or four weeks? We're going to find out more. So I hope you join those two. Um, healthcare hiring events are also taking place at many of the career force locations near you. So you can use this QR code to get right to our careerforcemn.com forward slash healthcare month events page that has many of these events and more on it. Um, one that I do want to point out to you, well, there's a healthcare discovery day in St. Cloud. There's an online 14 days of healthcare where you can log on 24 seven to find out what healthcare employers are hiring for, and then a health, a Hennepin County Healthcare Employment online hiring event. But another one that's happening in person with, in West St. Paul tomorrow um, is the employers in the South Metro, Cassia, Ebenezer, 
English Rose Suites, Geneva Suites, Walker Methodist, and others will be there. No registration, please bring a mask. And it's at Career Force West St. Paul at 1 Mendota Road West, 55118. Hope to have you there. Some of the other things, there's even more. Here's another QR code for a different calendar. These are all of the private and nonprofit employers all over, not necessarily Career Force um, sponsored, but so many more hiring events, both in person and online. So check that one out. And as usual, please contact Career Force nearest you at any time so that we can help you on your career search. You can go to careerforcemn.com slash locations, and there's always people who can set up a um, either like a Zoom type of um, online meeting or over the phone. Um, and I think there are a few limited in-person um, meetings taking place too, if you need it. So I'm so glad to have all of you here. Please come back next Tuesday, January 18th. So we'll continue, continue the conversation of all of the opportunities. Special thanks to Caring Professionals Home Care and Sanford Health representatives for being here today. So talk to you later. Take care.